in uh, looking at this radius rod I have been uh, trying to think of what I could use to I need to cut this here and here to get clearance but I need something to tie it back together and one of the things I thought of was a horseshoe and I have several horseshoes I have that one at the top that's probably off a pony but it's pretty well worn and I didn't think it would be sturdy enough and then I have the next one down which is a horseshoe but it, it's not uh, I don't know the ends are different see this end here is kind of squared and that one's kind of pointed and I like things to be symmetrical and then I thought of this one here and this would have been the perfect size but I don't think that that is steel I have my guess that that's cast iron and I actually brought it in and fit it and it would have worked just dandy but nah that's not going to work so what I have come up with is this unit here and uh, this followed me here from Minnesota and this is uh, an important part of the E-clip fastening system for train tracks. It's an elastic rail clip used with concrete railway sleepers to fasten rails on both sides. And it's also used on wooden sleepers. The rail clips are usually made of forged spring steel which are manufactured by a hot forging process which would make these really strong. And of course if they're really strong they would have to be to be used on railways where they have tons and tons of uh, weight going over the rails. The forged elastic rail clips are considered to be better than other metal for, uh, forming processes due to the most uniform microstructure. So that's what we're going to use and I'll insert a clip here where this would be used on a railroad and this is how we're going to mount it on here now I gotta cut the middle piece out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off right here and cut this leg off so it's even with this one and this one has already been flattened out some so once I get this one cut off I will flatten it down in the back as well and I think I'm going to notch this here and notch this here enough for that to fit in there before I start welding and then I will tack it in place while this is all mounted here on the goofy cart so I get the exact placement and uh, yeah then once I get that done then I could take it off and finish welding it up clean it up and paint it so that's what I'm going to do. Now hold on to your hats because here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to finesse this until I get it so it'll sit flat the way I want it to. And, uh, but that gives you an idea of what we're going for. I think, hope you can see that down in there. Let me put my hand down here. How's that? Yep. But it'll get mounted back in here more like that. Of course, with this cut out in here. So let me get at it. Now let's see if our piece will fit in there. Open this up a little bit more there. Okay, that's about what we want. If I could slide back that way a little bit more. That'll do me right there. That's what I want. 
Now I can finish cleaning up the paint off of this and clean a little more of the, these are galvanized pins. So I'll clean them up a little bit more. And then I can uh, tack them in place. Then I can take this apart and weld it up solid. Hang on to your hat. Well, it ain't pretty, but it's welded around the important sides. Now we're going to cut this out, and then we'll finish welding this to the pipe down in there. Well, this is our test fit, and uh, it's good. I'm going to, this is still hot down in here, but you can see my mark down in there. I'm going to taper this edge back towards the front give my chain plenty of clearance we don't have any problem anymore with interference with the hub which was the main issue not so much with the chain but i i also had this spaced out down here and i'm pushing it back into where it was originally so yeah we'll take care of that and uh I, as you can see down in there i still have to finish welding and but i needed to test fit it as you're seeing i need to uh taper now you can see the mark a little bit better there yep and we'll weld that all in solid and then we'll dress it up and uh, we'll shoot a coat of paint on it and she'll be ready for service again so there's that step in our work on the goofy cart and you know this is the, a part of a railroad uh, track system this up here with also a clip from the old style railroad track system. I used to have another sprocket up in here. I actually had a double sprocket here. The inside one went up to another sprocket here and then went back and we eliminated this one. But that's there as a reminder of days gone by. So we use all kinds of things on this making it work. So that's it for this time. Until next time, this is George the Shade Tree Fix It Man saying thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, thumbs up, sharing, all them good things. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Here's your imagination now. What do you think of them apples? Exhaust pipe coming right up here. Woo! -wee. Chrome. Yeehaw! We're thinking about it. Yes, we are. And if we end up swapping this single cylinder engine out for a V-twin, we'd have mufflers on both sides going back. Woo!